uh, we're going to talk about uh, putting God first. What does uh, putting God first look like? So I want to discuss it uh, briefly um, and uh, get a feel for, you know, where everyone's at. Uh, what? Uh, let me just open that, ask that as an open-ended question. What does putting God first look like in your lives? Uh, who wants to uh, start us off? Well, well, I, I'll start off. Uh, for me, it, it, it just came to be a revelation that, you know, I realized that, I just realized that Christ is in me and I am, I am in him. So uh, all of my activities are based on uh, pleasing God. So whether whether the issues be either good or bad, right or wrong, uh, my decisions are made by asking a question, is this going to please God, what I'm about to do or what I'm about to get into? And that helps me base my, um, make, base my decisions on that particular activity or, or, or venture or endeavor, you know. And I always, I do want to please God with, in everything I do now, you know. I'm, I'm, I'm elated to know that, um, you know, Christ died for our sins. So, you know, I used to beat myself up about, you know, repenting and, and I know that, that he died and, and he took away all, all sin. But, uh, now that I realize that he is in me and I am in him, that allows me and it keeps an awareness for me as to put him first in all my decisions. You know, I, the first thing I ask is, that, Lord, be with me today moment by moment, step by step in all my decisions, in all my activities, you know, and, and, and help me get through the day. Amen. Pray, praise God. Ernest, praise you know, God. God be the glory. Yes. <laughs> you worded that beautifully. I love how you shared that. <laughs> That's an awesome. I, I love your answer. Uh, who else wants to share? I will. Um, for me, it, putting God first in, in everything that I do and every thought, every from the little things to the big things is just relying on him constantly and and the holy spirit and and being obedient um i think obedience is is just such a a big part of it as well um so for me putting god first in everything is is utmost important in my life amen amen thank you rose Anyone else? Well, I agree with what the other two said. I think it's um, uh, like when we go to do something, we need to pray and see if the Lord is in this or not. And I can't say I always do that. I tend to sometimes rush into things without doing that, but I know that it's important. Um, I know putting God first is, I think, uh, daily in the Word, setting time aside to meditate in His Word and pray is putting Him first. Amen. 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 Hello? Anyone else? Yeah, yeah. Pastor John? Yeah. Had another call come in, so I want him to that. So yeah. Okay. <clears throat> Pastor John, we were just discussing about how to put God first. What what does? Let me ask you this, Pastor John. What does putting God first look like in your life? It's doing the work that Christ Himself would do. Letting my life hopefully be the example, and using words as little as possible that by going out, uh, feeding the hungry, uh, uh, trying to take care of the homeless, basically be a good, decent person, that a lot of Christ will try to zoom me and people will see that I've got a, uh, some, there's something different about me that they themselves will want, and that I believe we can accomplish more when we 
uh, meet people's needs first, then they might be more inclined to hear our message. If we get out of a soapbox somewhere and just stand there and preach at them and tell them how they need to be, all the things they we think they need to do to be, unquote, saved. That will get a whole lot more uh, response with honey. And then maybe if I go out and uh, provide a meal for the hung, for the for a hungry person, you might be more inclined to hear my message or whatever your uh, need might be. Thank you. Amen, Pastor. Amen. Um, so I, I listed some things here. Um, in what ways should we put him first? And I put, you know, the basics with our time, with our money, with our relationships, with our possessions, with our cares and worries. Um, these are certain ways, you know, things that we can think about. But, but I love what, you know, everyone has said, basically, um, is this going to please God? It's not It's not a mere what would Jesus do because we, we never know what Jesus would do because, I mean, Jesus was listening to his father all the time. Jesus only did what the father wanted him to do. Jesus only said what the father gave him to say. So, so it all comes back to um, not a uh, black or white kind of, uh, you know, what the Bible says or what Jesus would do necessarily because we, we, can't, we can't know that, but we can... Um, uh, listen to God in our own spirit. And so um, you know, I love that, that question that Ernest posed, is this going to please God? And it's like, you know, Lord, would you have me do this? If we, if we consider um, King David's relationship with God, um, he asked God all the time what he should be doing next. Should I do this? Should I do that? I just love to read about King David, and, and, and his, his walk with God was very personal, and that's exactly, I think, how we're – uh, supposed to to walk with him today. So thank you for your answers, um, Walt. I, I I don't want to not include you. Uh, everyone else has spoke. Uh, do you have how it, how is putting God first in, look like in your life? Well, uh, you know, it's just uh, it's a matter of when was God put first? Let's see. Here's the thing. I try to put God first in everything I do. Uh, I'm not always successful, but I, 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 I don't stop trying. So uh, as most of you know, I, I teach Bible college, uh, and I'm the chaplain out at the racetrack. And those are my two ministries that I do, besides going to church all the time. And, and I really love the Lord, and I do a few seminars here and there, uh, teaching from the Bible. And... Uh, these are all things that I, I, I've just gotten to the point right now where if, if I don't do it, I feel like I'm cheating myself. Um, so understanding that uh, I'm an old selfish human and I, I, I want to have God with me all the time. I, I want him in the car. I want him at my home, in my desk. I want him in my life. And, uh, you know, when it's, when I'm not doing something for him, I, I feel like I'm uh, I'm kind of lost. Yeah. So I, I've been trying uh, lately. In fact, one of the sermons I preached recently was I feel that we, myself, I'm speaking to myself here, but I'll say it corporately, that we need to be more aware of our surroundings as we walk through this life. Because I think that we're missing out on a lot of opportunities for ministry to people. And, you know, that person that you see in the grocery store, and, and some little voice comes up and says, you know what, uh, that person needs prayer. Amen. And how many of us are, are brave enough to go up and say, can I pray for you? Well, you know, these are just missed opportunities. And I really feel that the Lord is, while he's working on us, He's trying to minister to others through us because that's how it works. And uh, so a lot of times we miss out on opportunities to uh, to do something really cool for somebody else and, and to do something that God wants us to do. You know, it takes a little practice to be able to go up there and do that. Not many people will say, no, I don't want you to pray for me. But occasionally you'll find them. Um, 
we just have to be aware, and we have to be aware that these opportunities come up uh, on a Craigslist ad. You know, when you go out, I went out to look at a tool that I was uh, interested in, and I ended up praying with a guy. And Amen. those are things that you have to be aware of uh, as in your daily surroundings, because uh, God is going to present these opportunities, and, you know, we don't always take advantage of these times and uh so i i am my my biggest goal for this year i've read through the bible numerous of times i i can't tell you how many years i've been doing that i don't know 10 or 10 years anyway maybe more i, I try to read a different version every year to get a little different outlook on the same thing but we want to be able to take that knowledge that we get from the word and put it into everyday use. Amen. If we, if Amen. we can't do that, uh, then, you know, we're not really fulfilling the commission that he's given us to, to, to fulfill. We don't all have to be pastors or chaplains or Bible college teachers. We just have to be good stewards of his word. So, you know, my, my, my prayer for myself is, Lord, lead me to these people and then put this neon sign on their head so I can't miss it. Because sometimes that's what I need. Because I, I do miss it, you know, and I'm busy like everybody else. I'm retired, and I've never been busier in my whole life. So you know, that's all I can say. Just, you know, get in there, read your Bible, and then take that information that you get as the Holy Spirit gives you clarity. Uh, I'm a uh, uh I log all my uh, readings, and, and uh, uh, when the Holy Spirit shows me something, I, I put it in my computer, and I, and I set it up so I can search it. And uh, I try to be uh, very, very aware when the Holy Spirit is ministering that I'm looking at those words I don't understand, and I'm taking time to look them up, and then I put them in my reading log, and I look at them, and I go through. I was just looking today. I've got some 180 pages on my reading log now. And we just have to keep aware of what God has for us. Because each one of us, remember, we're parts of a body of Christ. Amen. We're not just one individual person. We're parts of a body. And every part is necessary for the body to function properly. So we have to do our part so that the body as a whole can function properly. So I'm just, you know, I, I'm thankful that the Lord even puts up with me because uh, I'm a tough one. <laughs> you know, we've got to be able to take advantage of those opportunities. We've got to have our eyes open, and we have to move forward because God's got a lot of plans for us. We've got a lot of work to do. I mean, you know, I, I don't want to get political, but our, our president is not a Christian. He needs his eyes opened. We have to pray for him every day. You know, and now we have an election coming up. We have a new president coming in. We need a godly man to be our president. Amen. And those are things that we need to pray about, and we need to seek his face daily. We need to read his word daily. We need to see what he has for us. We need to be excited about it because God does some really cool stuff. And if we're not participating, we miss out on it. It's like being on a roller coaster ride, and you buy your seat, and then you get out and stand and watch the roller coaster go around. That doesn't work. There's no thrill there. You've got to get <laughs> on that thing and ride it for all it's worth. When God comes in and says, hey, Walt, there's a guy I want you to talk to. Go up and talk to him. And you know what? You might be talking about, hey, I, well, the weather's really nice today. You know what? Or it's so, man, it's hot today. Wow. And and all of a sudden, you're talking about God, because that was the conversation that was destined. But if you miss it, if you don't walk up there, talk about the weather or whatever it is that you're going to do, then you're going to miss out. So I preached my soapbox. I'm done. Amen, Mr. Wall. Yeah, amen. I, I appreciate your, your words. And, and by all means, I, I want to encourage everyone to participate as much as they can because I feel like, uh, you know, I only have my perspective, but, you know, Rose has hers, Mom has hers, Earth has his. And so I, I feel like someone's going to listen to this. I know people do, 
listen to these uh, these calls because I'm recording it and um, we're going to post it. And um, you, know, someone is going to hear something someone says, and it's going to make a difference in their life. It's just how it works. So I, I want you to feel free to share as the Holy Spirit leads you to share. So that's one thing I, I love about our, 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 our time on these calls is not just about me talking. It's about a, the body of Christ. We are the church. This is about as church as you're going to get on these conference calls because we are the body of Christ. And, uh, and we, we're speaking openly. I'm learning from what everyone else is saying on this call. I'm inspired. I'm encouraged because what everyone else is saying on this call, and it's a beautiful thing. We're sitting at the feet of Christ talking about his ways and how to put him first. A- anything else? Well, well Larry, um, you know, like Mr. Watt was saying, uh, you know, we, we're, we're really busy, you know, with our own life. But if we if we put Christ first and foremost uh, and, and, and sort of, um, not sort of, but, but actually, you know, keep in mind what pleases him. Now, I can't, um, I, I'm at that point where he's talking about, you know, walking up to an individual and asking to pray for him, but I will uh, acknowledge them if I see see them, or I would just go ahead and pray for him anyway. I ask God to bless all kind of uh, people on a daily basis, whether I speak to those people personally or not. If I have the time, then uh, more people that I'm, I'm familiar with, then I'll get out and I'll, and I'll speak to them, I'll walk up and I'll uh, address them. But I'm always going down the street, and, I, you know, you see individuals who are, are less fortunate than, than I may be, not to say, not to say that I'm well off because I, I am uh, struggling uh, uh, in this world. You know, but I always say, Lord, uh, bless this individual. You know, they look like he's doing too well right now. Uh, bless his day. Make make something uh, happen in his life where he he'll uh, be more cheerful or put a smile on his face. You know, and uh, and and know that that he didn't put that smile on his face by himself. When I pray for, for I work for I work for the adult daycare, and so I, there's hundreds of people around me on a daily basis, and so I get to hearing. Uh, they're not all Christians, so I get to hear the the blood of their uh, displeasures or whatever's going on in their life, you know. And I pray for them, and I tell them that you know to give those give those issues to God and not man, because man can't fix us. You know, I can't fix you, you can't fix me, but God can fix us all. He has done that Amen. through His Son, Jesus, and. And when we acknowledge that, that that pleases God for Him to be acknowledged, and 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 life will be a, a much more pleasant. Just like you you spoke about David, you know, and uh, God said David was a man after his own heart, and and David was doing uh, pretty pretty good. You know, he had he had his army around him. He had some some good people and, and some people that I don't think that was uh, uh, spiritually inclined whatsoever, like Joab, his uh, commander in his army. Uh, mm-hmm. But but when Joe, when when uh, David uh, encountered uh, Bathsheba, it's when his whole life started going downhill. And God uh, God told him what was going to what he was going to inflict upon him, and and uh, David felt so hurt because he hurt God. I think that's where his more remorse stirs from, because when Shimei, you know, Shimei, uh, he he defamed him by you know throwing rock, kicking sand, and dust at him and all. And and when it came to uh, when he when he came back to uh, uh, in power uh, after running from his son Absalom, well, Shimei came to apologize to him, but uh, Joab he wasn't just going ahead and slew him right then and there for uh, uh, disrespecting the king. But he had a but uh, King David had a different mindset because he realized that because he didn't take these opportunities to 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 uh, speak to his son when he when he uh, killed his brother. Well, he he knew because he sinned that brought the sin uh, you know into his own home. And because of it, 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 it's like he started this. So, you know, I'm going through a situation right now, and it's, it's the second time. 
that, and I know that it's, it's I didn't I didn't get the message or I didn't get the lesson the first time, and I understand now how important it is for me to get the lesson. So, you know, my relationship with with, with Christ is like I'm laughing at myself because He told me already that I shouldn't have done this. So now I, I've learned to be content in all my situations, you know, because I know that God is with me. You know, he, 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 he enabling me to, to get by day by day by, by staying in contact with him. But had I done what he said in the first place, I'd be better off. You know, my situation wouldn't be this issue. But, but because I, I'm learning this lesson, I don't mind walking through it. You know, it's for my own good. It, 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 it'll Amen. teach me how to comfort the next individual that it finds himself in the same situation or whatever. You know, and that's what David was going through. When uh, the, Even though Absalom was uh, trying to overthrow him and all, he didn't want to kill his son. He wanted to take that opportunity to bring his son back in and console him so maybe he could reach him through, through the word of God, you know. But he didn't get that opportunity because Joe has killed him out there uh, in the forest, you know. <laughs> you know. Yes, he did. And uh, you know, he was uh, he, he was the root of the God that uh, 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 Zariah, those those sons of the Zariah, he was well, they were something else. But uh, I mean, when we make these mistakes, you know, it, it it gives us the opportunity. God God gives us that strength and that courage to be able to console another individual that's going through it and don't know how to bring themselves out of it. And with Christ, we can do all things because he strengthens us, you know. I, it, it sounds like I'm rounding, I'm on, I'm on fire. There's so many areas that, uh, that uh, in the Bible, I jump from, from scripture to scripture on a daily basis. And um, um, it, 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 it encourages me. I mean, it gives me all kinds of uh, uh, uh just, just the, the knowledge. I'm grateful for what God does for me, and I, I'm going to stop at this particular moment because I have to run to the door. But you guys go on. I'll be right back. Okay, Ernest. I'll be right back. Thank, thank you, Ernest. I, I really appreciate all he had to share. Um, anyway, I just love this enthusiasm, and I just I tell you guys, um, you, you know, it's easy to find Christians. It really is. It's easy to find Christians. But you know what? It's hard, difficult to find Christians that truly love God's word and that truly um, have a passion for him. I, I, I don't know how many times I'll, I'll talk to a Christian about daily Bible reading, and it's like, it's like they zone out. They didn't want to hear it. And I'm telling you, so all I'm saying is this is a refreshing conversation to hear from people, and we do this every every Monday night. We're talking to people that are, are in love with God and love of the Word, and um, that's a rare thing. And that's why, you know, we keep coming back because um, uh, you, I just got totally encouraged by Ernest, who I've never spoken to verbally before. I don't think so. Um, <laughs> we've known him for a number of years.